So welcome back to the Community Agriculture Project podcast. I am your host, Emily, and we have another exciting episode for you coming up today. Um, But just a little bit of background if you're new here. The Community Agriculture Project is an accessible and interactive agriculture resource directory. We document and provide insight into local agriculture landscapes and sovereignty-based projects. So yeah, we've just been meeting so many amazing people forming season one of this podcast. And right now I'm actually in Detroit, Michigan with my friend here. So yeah, can you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about where you're from? And from there. Yeah, what's good, y'all? My name is uh, Yazi. Um, my full name is Yazi Quiel. Uh, I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I am my community uh, like affiliations. I am the garden director for a nonprofit called Tribe. Uh, Tribe uh, main focus is uh, really giving back to the homeless community um, and providing uh, hygiene products. Um, food uh, monthly at the end of every Sunday, uh, but also um, deeper work trying to actually provide sustainable and long-term plans for uh, homeless people uh, to actually like live like human beings and be treated as such. Uh, so that's the main goal. Uh, and in that, uh, the garden dire- or the director of it, Siri Amani, shout out Siri, uh, she hit me up three years ago and was like, hey, I know you're into gardening and farming and whatnot, and uh, we have a position open and I would love for you to be garden director. And the cool part about that was, uh, I truly wasn't ready at the time, Um, but it's, so like I was super into gardening and everything and the the method that I was gonna use is hugel culture. And those not familiar with hugel culture is when you, dig out long trenches and then you do different layers of like decomposing wood, wood chips, compost, and then you do layer after layer until you get these mounds. And then uh, once you let those decompose after several years, they you don't have to do anything, water, anything. They just create their own environments to where, you know, they just do they do their own natural thing and it's awesome. And they kind of like generate a lot of diversity, oh, right? Like in the soil, yes, microbial ab- diversity, which can be potentially good for remediation depending on the type of soil you're working with if you're in an urban environment and that's exactly what happened so in the we have three hugel uh, small hugel pits uh in the garden and uh it's funny because they were three feet high off the ground three years ago and now we have to remound them because they are flush with the ground now so that's super cool and good because we planted some like local uh like local plum trees uh, some local um, uh, service berries. Yes. Uh, and another one of the mounds, we planted some strawberries and this was the first year that we got like a nice little strawberry harvest. Um, and so like, motherfuckers been eating. Like really, 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 <laughs> really been good. eating. And so that's been like very, very uh, uh, nourishing to know, like just to see, cause we that was the most we tilled and all of the soil just like around it is actually soil and before it was clay like or just pure dirt and so you get to see how just all the biology and the life just made the soil all around the accompanying area just mad rich and amazing and so that's beautiful that's so important and that's all i knew all i knew was hugo culture at that time and i was that's like all right to we're know, gonna hugo culture this that so shout out to travis uh travis is the owner of north coast cannabis and uh, I was sitting in his living room while he was rolling up super big can of gars, and he got me hip to this dude named Chris Trump. Shout out Chris Trump. Yeah, shout out Chris Trump. That is my dude. I love you, brother. And we're just watching this video, and he's like, "Have you ever heard of Lactus Bacillus?" And I'm like, "Nah, bro. I don't, you hadn't? I don't know what this is. Nah, I had no clue." And he's like, "Oh, dude, you gotta see this." So he showed me the video of Chris Trump making lab, like lab, and I was like. So what does this do? And he explained to me, he was like, this is soil conditioner. So like, you don't have to till if you just com- like apply this over and over, it will actually like generate the microbes underneath to be drawn up to, you know, loosen all that shit up. And I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> that description. Holy fucking shit, that's live. <laughs> so that's when boom, 
I got the fucking natural farming bug. He implanted the natural farming bug in me. And then I ended up uh, a year later taking Chris Trump's uh, natural farming intensive class uh, to become a soil smith. Okay. And like. So you're saying you're a certified soil smith? I am not a certified yet because I still have to take the, like, I have to teach, like, yeah. uh, the, like, the, like uh, to be a soil smith, you have to, like, teach a small group how to like collect indigenous microorganisms. Okay. I just have to take that course as the next one's available, but I 100% know how to do it. I've so had- that is something that people can look out for as an offering from you, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Amazing. I can at least teach introductory natural farming courses, 1000%, uh, and that's what I do. I teach, you know, labs, uh, ferments, as far as like uh, fermented fruit juice and plant juice, FPJs, FFJs, stuff like that. And- uh, Yo, oh, anybody in Ohio right now, this is some serious, serious juice that you yeah. can tap into like tap in. this is incredible okay yeah continue. thank you thank you continue. and so that was a uh that was about six months or a whole year after i had gotten uh the gardening uh position okay and so as soon as i came yeah what's up yeah okay so you started this position you pretty much had developed already this knowledge of legal culture mm -hmm. and that was your plan for the garden and you pretty much had free reign mm -hmm. so what what was that experience that you were like oh i wasn't ready for this like what was that part of you that was like i'm still not ready well so like i have a problem with uh leadership mm -hmm. and uh oh, i love that you're bringing this up uh, leadership is something that has just always been consistently forced upon me since i've been a child and I remember the first time was when I was in preschool and I was quote unquote acting up and a teacher pulled me to the side and they said, you have to set an example because these other kids, how you act, they're gonna act like you. And I remember being so confused about like, that ain't got shit to do with me. Right. <laughs> they need to act like, they don't have to follow me. This is, that's weird, that's weirdo behavior. No, like I don't have to set a better example. And so with leadership, as I'm unfortunately in leadership roles, you like have to accept like the dumb ass shit that comes with like leadership. And so- There's a lot of navigations that come and a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. and like, yeah, you have to know that you're ready to be a leader. I think, and it takes practice. And to me, like I'm a big anime fan and big comic book fan. And so from all my, the animes and comic books that I've seen, the best, best protagonists and even antagonists, um, they like really, really have their their specific own path, their own belief, and they really, really, really rock out with it, no matter like how crazy it may seem to everyone else. But they also don't want, they don't want to lead. They don't want to have the responsibility of like dragging people along, of consistently having to make sure this is okay, that's okay. Uh, maintaining people's fucking egos and emotions and making sure everybody's fucking not even happy, just content. There's so many different levels of leadership that like, for me, I'm lazy right now and I don't wanna do all that shit, mm -hmm. but- Or rather you need help and support because you wanna be able to focus like on the shit, on your ideas. Exactly. Like Exactly. So yeah, I think, I think that I like that you're highlighting this because just in terms of like community work, I think that we can be even more empowered as leaders. Like if you're still a leader in this certain, you know, in what you're bringing into this position and yeah, good leaders know how to delegate when they need some help and assistance. And mm -hmm. so I appreciate that you say that. And it's nice to be able to focus on like, yeah, I have work to do with this land and this soil. And, mm -hmm. And so I want to shout out my boy Adam Moeller too. He's my co-director, and he has done so much. And Wait, like, so one second, can you co-director of what? What's the of name? the garden? Of, of what's uh, the name of the garden? Uh, the tribe, the tribe foundation garden. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the cool part about it is, uh, it's in the west end of downtown Cincinnati, and uh, that's actually a, a place where my family is from. Uh, I'm, I'm black, but I'm also mixed. Um, and so the black side of my family is originally from the West End, but they have been decimated by the crack e epidemic in Cincinnati in the 90s. And so they never uh, were able to recover. So they ended up selling and, you know, getting rid of their homes in the West End, which are now worth a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And so one thing that's very nourishing to my soul is that I get to be in the area that I was as a kid 
two blocks down the street, I went to elementary school at Martin Luther King Academy, yeah. which is now a mosque. It's really funny. Oh. Um, but like just to be around in that area and it's right next to like a like a heroin pimp, uh, like not pimp, uh, sex workhouse. And like it's a it's a gnarly place. Uh, when we were getting it together, I literally would like pull one of them like, hey, what's good? Like, what you doing? Uh, nothing. I'm like, you trying to make uh, 40 bucks real quick? It's like, hey, what you need? Like, I need you to help me turn this compost pile real quick. Or, or turn this um, uh, uh, wood, wood chip pile real quick. Oh, bet I got you. Uh, I know for a fact they're about to take that $40 and use it to abuse drugs. Uh, I honestly don't care because uh, I've been homeless for a nice chunk of my life. So I understand you're going to get it one way or the other. You're going to get that $40 by either doing some real fuck shit or I can I can help you put you to work. And I know you're going to knock it out in an hour. So I just paid you a living wage and a more than a living wage because in Cincinnati, I just give you $40 for an hour. Yeah. So I'm now treating you better than these employers are treating even people like me. Right. So to me, Look at that, that is that that's doing, doing that's yeah. actually changing just on the super, super small individual level, just like how systems should be operating. Right. And so uh, I said that to somebody, I'm like, yeah, they probably went and bought some crack. And like, they're like, how could you support that? I'm like, well, what am I gonna do with my resources? Stop them from using crack? <laughs> no, uh, I know they're gonna use crack. I'd rather them get some physical good work in. And guess what? They're down here with these good ass microbes because this is all regenerative. So no matter what, they is getting some healing out of this. And so that is like a really cool part of this part of the, the, the hood that it's in because it's in the real, real hood. This soil was impacted and just dirt. When we dug it up, it was huge, just clumps of rocks in there that we just had to like just toss. Yeah. And so now when you step on it, it's just, it's like squishy. Dang. And so- uh, That's, and yeah, it's so healing to create a space like that and then healing for whoever gets to come in. And yeah, oh yeah. Such a blessing. The main point of it too, I fucking should have brought this up, of this garden. Yeah, when I brought it back up, like Tribe, I wanted to say like, okay, tell me a little bit of, of the background of Tribe and tell me who's involved in it. So Tribe, uh, Tribe Foundation is amazing. So Miss um, Jenny Wright, uh, which is Siri Amani's mother, uh, she is the uh, main head and founder of it. Uh, there's many uh, like moving parts, but the, the main uh, person uh, who like does the, the, the main movement is Siri Amani. And then there's uh, I'm not going to mention any other names because people are going to get salty that I didn't mention them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to do that. <laughs> but all tribe, I love y'all motherfuckers. Y'all know who y'all are. But um, beyond being just like an organization for the community, uh, it's an organization that also pays artists. So a big thing in Cincinnati is that uh, the artists do not get paid anything what they're worth. Yeah. So what Siri has done, uh, like via tribe, has gotten consistent uh, bookings at local bars, um, places like that, to actually get artists paid like true money to be able to like pay their fucking bills. Oh yeah. And so the connectivity is really cool because you get to see just like the idea of tribe is not just like a word and there's a saying, it's like tribe, 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 tribe. So like that's the call and so a lot of people just do the call because it's a cool it's like a cool call but uh to me it's very like it's like important to my heart because siri has helped me heal from so 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 much just like trauma of not trusting people and uh her putting me in this position has forced me to ask people things and then i had to trust them to follow through and that is really really built up like wow, I can actually ask people things and then they come through for me. This is fucking crazy. I've not really That's experienced beautiful. this before. This is like wild. So her introducing that into my life, I like uh, wanted to spread that like wildfire. Yeah. And that is how like I move now thanks to her is that, okay, how can I like utilize the idea of like an actual like tribe and so I look at myself as mycelium. So I'm known as like a really good facilitator. And so uh, I threw this thing called Artsy Fartsy with my homie Ezra and Mary Shane. And it was this really, really cool, funky art, art event with like the 
best musical artists uh, in Cincinnati right now. And what's cool about that is basically I just made like a playlist and made it theatrical and put it in like an order how you would like see a play. And a lot of those people who perform also come down and throw hands down at the garden. Okay. Who normally would never have thrown hands down at a garden. Right. But me just linking with them and me having the respect and love for their craft and what they literally offer and nourish my life to be able to go and blast their tunes when I'm down at the garden and give that garden that good energy. They now have reciprocated that and they bring their actual fucking sweat, their fucking breath, everything down to that garden. So it's such a cool like reciprocating like flow of how you get to see like art and like nature truly, truly like combine and heal one another. It's fucking fire. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay, so you're doing some serious, serious, incredible work. Yeah. Like, you know, leaving nobody behind, you know? So, like, I'm a, I'm a very weird person. I love meeting new people. Like, that is my shit. Like, I love meeting new people. But when I get into, like, spaces, I love all those people, but I, I want my people there. Like, wherever I go, I want my people there, too, with me because I feel like they would enjoy it just as much as me. And enjoying things alone is just, unless it's like a movie or just like a meal, stuff like that. Like I love doing that stuff alone, but like real experiences, I wanna do that with like my people so we can like grow old with one another and be like, hey man, you remember back in my fucking 2021? And we, uh, like I like look forward to those things and like building those type of memories with one another. And so like, that just, I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but I feel like that all ties in. <laughs> it definitely ties in because you're creating like a vessel for real joy in your community. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just take one form because like, yeah, it's it highlights the interconnectedness that we have with each other that we want to bring, bring ourselves up, like elevate ourselves, like, yeah. Let, allowing people to work in their strengths and mm -hmm. showing them what you do and just sharing that. Like mycelium. Like mycelium, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm known also as like a like just a facilitator because I can see people's like personalities and I can see like what they do and I can like really just like in my head be like, okay, I'm going to sneakily figure out a way to make y'all connect because <laughs> yeah, y'all need to. Exactly. And then and then what I like to do, I like to make that connection and then just like the mycelium. I am that thin little one that's like, okay, my nutrients are no longer needed and I fizzle out and then y'all connection just fucking thickens and bonds because that's the nutrient yeah. that needs to fucking flow and talk to one another while like I fade back. Tip. You go through the soil and grow in, into a new mycelial web somewhere Egg else. So. Exactly. Like, like exactly. with the trees around you. It's all connected. Yeah, you are. You so, did it. yeah, you did I've it. been waiting to talk to Yaz for such a long time because I feel like we really share this vision of the soil and like mm -hmm. how all of these connections in the soil, especially with your background in like indigenous microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that diversity that we have in the soil, like trying to bring that to your community and like you just do that mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's also. Uh, thank you for making me deal with this because it is. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, I like really struggle with um, accepting uh, like uh, the cool things that I do because I'm just like, oh no, that's just what I'm supposed to do, right. and like I get very uncomfortable with like receiving like accolades and stuff. I'm like, oh no, 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 like I just like brush it off. So like I appreciate this a lot because you're making me face it and be like, no, you're actually doing good work, and it is uncomfortable but it is very refreshing and I appreciate you a lot for making me like, like it's it's a different type of shit talking because normally yes. like I talk that shit, <laughs> but this is like, this is actually how I like truly, truly feel. And it's like really cool that I appreciate you bringing this out of me of just like, oh, okay, I, I do do cool stuff. Tight, all right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I thank you. say that to people, you're welcome. And like, I've been just saying to people lately, like you need to deserve your love, no flowers mm -hmm. like you already deserve them and so like i think it's great to celebrate the projects that we're working on mm -hmm. and just like yeah share with other people because you're inspiring the way that i want to engage with my community you know? mm -hmm. and that's why i like to tap in with people that are doing different things in different 
place is like yeah yeah that's You're that's why i tapped in with you i pr it was something the first thing was it was something you had like a series on your story where you like were naming uh different microbes oh yeah okay, and like so you were, I you were identifying this. them and i was like oh shit, this is sick wait when did you how did you see that this was like uh this was at like the like almost the latter end of the pandemic yeah so i was doing this project where i had soil samples and i was pretty much testing them yeah. on different so i was doing an extraction of the soil and then with that extracted water essentially i would put that on an agar plate and i was playing around with different agar recipes like potato dextrose and then like bandoni media and uh rose bengal agar and i was just seeing like how many different fungi and bacteria i could grow using these different recipes mm. and then identifying them by their morphology under a microscope so like a lot of those pictures is i was just so simply fascinated with like the different formations of the spores in the soil that i was finding and like yeah no, I, that's what that's what made me tap in i was like oh. i wonder how you found it though like uh, so it, i was just like it's when uh instagram had like where you just like could scroll up like scroll on videos yeah. and i was just scrolling through and it popped up and i was like oh this is gas i forgot I think one of my homies like must have like been following you or something. Yeah. One of my like natural farming homies because yeah. it just popped up on the feed and then that's how I tapped in with you. And then you started doing the community agriculture pro project and I was like, all right, this is dope. Yeah. And then when I saw you were like tapped in with like artists and like cool people who like I'm into, I was like, oh, tight. Nah, this is gang right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's the whole system is necessary. Yeah. So. Like I definitely have put in a lot of hours in farms and gardens, and like mm -hmm. I really believe in being able to have that connection. Um, but the Lions main capsules are crazy, okay. next level, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Truly, well, y'all got to tap in more. with that. It is gas. Yes, <laughs> I have some more actually. If you want. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, I hope I hope. Hope I knocked it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you have anything else that like that you're working on right now, or just like a little bit more about what it's been like through time working at Tribe, and like how how has that organization been affected by changes that are happening in your community? So it's actually like really really cool because the initial like uh, start of it was pretty dramatic because I didn't know, but. I was essentially replacing uh, someone who was the garden director for years and had never planted a single thing. Yeah. And interesting. Right, right. And so I didn't know I was like replacing them essentially. But like, we thought our plot was supposed to be on this uh, one, like this other, like literally just two houses down. So. I got my homie Gary Collins, who has Collins Construction, to bring uh, to to rent a um, backhoe and to dig out the the mounds for us because we weren't about to take shovels and and dig them trenches. So we did it at the complete wrong location because oh that worked the dude just fucked around and did not have the right location. This did not pay attention, so we did all that work on somebody else's property. God. It was like, it was it was expensive work. Yeah. So then when we figured out what it was, we had to then spend that same money to do the actual job on the actual plot. Uh, needless to say, he was removed on some other shit right. um, immediately. And so even starting that, it was very frustrating and I was going to immediately quit. Like, what am I going into? This is, this is bullshit. Like, but then I was like, wait, this is like what I signed up for. I signed up to be the director, to be the leader. Fuck, I have to like stick this out back to the leadership shit. I'm just like, yes, that's exactly what I was Fuck, I have to do this. Fuck. And that's like a characteristic <laughs> that one of my friends told me this. It's like people who end up having, who end up being in leadership roles and like gravitate toward leadership roles. A lot of the times they do so because they walk into a space and they're like, I can really see what needs to be done here. You know, in order for like 
and that depends on your personal values and your vision which mm -hmm. is yeah like for me it's like okay i want to see my community be more provided for and be more connected and have more sovereignty like what does that look like mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so that's those values is like what you're moving out of when you're in that leadership position mm -hmm. so it is what you signed up for and it's like scary and also really exciting at the same time because it's like you have an opportunity to change some shit, to change some <laughs> shit. yeah so it was cool like learning too because it was like hmm so really it got to show me on like a like just sped up scale that the small requirements it does to like actually have change and it requires so much effort and actual sacrifice and frustration and you have to not deal with it you have to healthily assess it and then nurture it yeah. and then once you do that that's why like the the garden is such a was such an easy place to do it for me for because i would like microdose and then be like frustrated but i'd be like you know what what am i frustrated about like i'm outside i'm fucking i'm breathing i'm with i'm i'm dirty as fuck like yeah. awesome like this is great yeah. and then like you get to speed up like three years later and then every time i go there it's like absolutely like it's insane because uh to the naked eye it looks like a lazy overgrown garden um with like you know strategic beds but the reality is every single thing that grows there can either be eaten uh, or broken down for a ferment or can be used for um, medicinal properties and purposes. Incredible. Every single thing that grows there. And so like I allowed the weeds, which are just a whole bunch of cool natives yeah. to like grow and they grew like crazy. And one thing I like bring people down there when they help and give hands, I'm like, so do you see all these weeds y'all? I'm like, these are all natives and helping. And then I like pulled them out I'm talking about some of the roots were a foot down in there. And I'm like, this happened in a couple months, y'all. Do y'all see this? Do y'all know what that's doing underneath? There is so much life and air underneath here that it is unreal. It is truly penetrating down and fucking trying to get as much, much going as possible. Yeah. And so just that well, satisfaction exactly exactly That's beautiful you're so poetic yes thank you thank you it's accidental yeah. and so i literally like <laughs> like just every time i go down there i'm like all like the frustrations and everything it's so worth it because like this garden is like a it's like a tree and it's a rare tree because you know normally don't get to see like a tree grow trees are normally just for generations to come yeah. and so this is a tree that was very very fast and quick acting thanks to natural farming, proving to me that you can actually regenerate completely land in about three years. Wow. Like completely from completely compact soil to now sustaining fucking pollinators coming around all the time. Just uh, like just teaming with life in three years. Read the teaming with microbes. Yeah, hey, with uh, so I'm actually doing a breakdown of that book because Hey, resources. Yeah, so Resource it's, it's hard. I had to listen to that book about 20 times. Which one? Uh, teaming with microbes. Okay. Because I did not like, I did not get educated uh, past like high school and biology and all that. So there's a lot of terms that if you did not go to like college or a really, really good high school where you paid attention in class, it's a lot of shit that he's just saying gibberish. Right. So. There's like that barrier to the information. So. Yeah, so to me, shout out to dude. Like I'm not disrespecting dude. And I'm just being a uh, balanced about opinions because it's such a valuable resource that I would not have any of that, like a lot of the information that I know about microbes without tapping in. But it's a little bit on the classist supremacist line. Right. Because education should not be made for people who just took biology courses. So there's even sayings like in the book that says, as you, it's like condescending tone, as you should have learned in your introductory freshman biology course. And it's like, like, I feel you, my dude, but that's mad condescending to somebody like me who wasn't in positions to necessarily uh, be in the straights at homeless at 18 
to be able to take a biology class seriously. So, but I'm interested in it. So why isn't this in a soluble form for somebody like me that I am very intelligent that I got to listen to this motherfucker 18, 20 times. So I'm breaking down teaming with microbes uh, for just regular people. So like, I'll be like, all right, this word right here, I make, I'm going to make nicknames for like microbes because I think it'll be so cool to kind of use A-A-V-E, but put them on microbes. Can you tell people what A-A-V-E is if they don't know? A-A-V-E is- They might already know by being appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Unintentionally. It's uh, African American vernacular English. And so like, for instance, like, uh, yes, that's A-A-V-E. Um, particularly queer AAVE. Um, so TikTok culture has just made a whole bunch of just society use AAVE very, very disrespectfully. Um, but it also shows on a social level how powerful AAV is in understanding language and just just changing it. So I look at like mycelium, right? And I look at my niggas and I'm like, I say mycelium over and over and over again. My homie Sudi, shout out Sudi, when I say mycelium, he'd be like, oh yeah, that myco shit. I'm like, so you register mycelium as myco shit? And he like, yeah, nigga. Like, I'm like, well, myco is a whole different term and word, but is that how you register it? I'm like, yeah, I tell people, yeah, that myco shit. I'm like, yeah, what you said, my, my, my see whatever, myco shit. I'm like, so you, uh, what's myco shit? And he explained, he's like, it's that little white shit and it'd be talking to the plants and the trees and all that shit. And I'm like, Oh, you get it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, we finna AAV this shit up. Right. Because as long as you get the concept of what you're talking about, to me, that's all that matters because you're getting very, very intense microbiology concepts, but you're not being held in the bounds of fucking classist ass English. Because to me, we can learn the actual terms later. Let's learn the actual concepts first. And then you can put labels on them later because you know the systems and be like, now you can delve deeper on your own. But let's start off with some nicknames. That's not harming science by creating nicknames for shit and making it more familiar for us. Just making it more fucking accessible. And what is all natural farming about? Making soluble ferments for the soil. Mm -hmm. So this is a soluble fucking process for us to understand how the fucking, how the soil works. Right, and (laughs) I have said this probably in other interviews and just like in my science work in general, but the definition of science and like what's acceptable there is very colonized, you know? So um, there are so many different ways to be science, embody science, practice science, and it doesn't look like one thing. Traditional Um, science, I say is dogma now it's it's similar to religion it's like mainstream religion not not like a you know if you're actually just spiritual and spiritual with your religion it's like christianity it's like yeah. this is the way and yeah which is weird because if you're an actual scientist you know that's bullshit there's so many ways it's infinite amount of ways there is no amount of ways that is is not possible right <laughs> and so yeah like i i find that it can be very discouraging to like pinhole myself as that kind of scientist and I think it's hurtful to people around us because their voices can't be elevated if they're not practicing science in a certain way and like everyone's experience yeah what we're experiencing in relation to the earth is like it's important that we communicate and understand and respect that of others and and so that's why I love Miyabe shout out Miyabe Shields um she breaks down like the actual molecular compounds of like uh, psilocybin and THC and CBD and CBG and actually breaks down and has these cool 3D models of like what they look like. But then she also relates it to different pharmaceutical shit that that's in. And then is like, cause she's a pharmacist that is like not really pro pharmacist. She's like a little pretty big anti-pharmacy but she makes the relation of how there's actual like natural pharmaceutical medicine in like a lot of foods that we eat, um, a lot of the things that are considered drugs, but she puts it in a soluble form because she has these models where you can look at what she's talking about. It's not just big words and then just like, all right, I'm left with that. She's like playing with it and getting like involved with it. And then in like in an environment, she's talking about like THC, 
she'll be in with a bunch of weed plants. So then you're able to like register in your brain like, oh, okay, on a really small level, that's what she's talking about. And it's soluble and it's not classist and it's something that I watch two times and I get it. Right. So like people like that are like the people who like I fuck with who are really like declassing like really, really important and intense information and knowledge about science. <laughs> Did you hear the last episode that was published that because Miyabi was on that episode. Yes, that's why that's why I wanted to make sure I fucking like, shout <laughs> yeah, it out. Because I just wanted to be that mycelium and tap in. Make sure you tap into that episode. That shit is fucking crazy. Yeah. Tap into every single one of these episodes. Um it's really crazy because uh Emily is a person that like I really from afar have just like really looked up to because they do what I like have dreamed of doing, and that's just being like more of a world mycelium. And like I'm very a, a local underground mycelium and regional but emily really has the ability to tap in on like a world level and like bring people together on like all the commonalities and not like the disagreements on just base nature and it's fucking fire and like y'all really need to tap in like if y'all fuck with this episode go listen to every single other one because i'm probably the most like uh i'll say just enigmatic but this is the least amount of actual great information you'll get. Uh, every single previous episode is just mind blowing knowledge and information that like you want to get a notepad out and take some fucking notes because it's, it's really like that you get in some true game. So like shout out you for like providing like world coverage of like what we're all doing on like a similar level in our communities in the fucking world and showing how it's the same. So like yeah. you're killing that shit. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just my my heart's work, so Hell yeah. I'm, I'm so happy to be tapped in and I'm so happy to be a part of the too. Hell yeah, me too. I'm super honored, man. Yeah. Much love, yeah. much love. I was gonna ask you a couple more questions. Okay, so I was wondering what is your favorite herb or whatever you grew up tribe, like what's your favorite thing to work with? What plant have you had like the closest relationship to? So the strawberries and it's because strawberries if you we planted them from seed so strawberries they take at least two seasons to fruit like they don't they will not fruit that first year probably not that second year and this is the beginning of the third year and we got such a beautiful harvest during the strawberry moon and that was the most gratifying because they are growing in the Hugel Mounds. And that's the one I have like the closest relationship to. Uh, just because I'm like that, it's a, it's a reflection of the time. It was, we just planted a couple of seeds and you get to see how this, they are just crawling and crawling to where in like two, three years, the whole mound is just gonna be strawberry the fuck out. <laughs> all the time with no effort you like and they're going to be great because they're in hugel mounds so yes. they're just going to be microbially just very like nutrient dense yeah, exactly. and they're gonna like the flavors from the actual like terroir is going to be fucking insane because we got pawpaw trees down there oh, we have baby. service berry trees we have different stone fruit trees and then right next to it we have sage that just goes fucking ham it grows in the wind it likes growing in snow it is the most powerful sage I've ever seen in my life. And that's my second baby is that sage because, oh, she be pumping. Well, she don't need no help. She don't even like water for real, for real. She likes, she likes what she likes and she just thrives when she wants to thrive. So like, we'll like, you know, prune her and then out of nowhere, it's like, damn, I love you, sage. Um, and then. This is the first year we're growing watermelons. And That's how I feel about my watermelons. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. And like my they're going crazy. Going crazy. They're going crazy. And so those are the three that like are the highlights of, uh, of the garden to me. Those are those are my babies. And then uh, the indigenous is uh, probably the um, the uh, I forgot what the name of it, but it's a it's a local dand dandelion root. OK. And uh, I actually like when I'm down there, sometimes I just like pluck it and I'll just start eating the greens because yeah, you can because they're edible yeah. and they're actually really good. I learned though, the big ones are terrible. They're mad bitter and I would avoid those. I would just go to the babies because them big ones is trifling to the motherfuckers. The bitters are good for you though. 
They are. I know they are, but I they. Love a bitter oh tea. boy, it is intense. It is intense. <laughs> it is intense. But yeah, I like that. Okay. okay. But those are the relationships that those are like. That's beautiful. I we got, we got, a, we got a thing. We got a thing. Oh, yeah. My watermelons are so independent. Like they just like, if I go out of town and I'm away from my garden, like my garden prefers to be left alone and just be independent. That's fire. That is absolute beautiful. That's that, mean, that means that soil so good. That means yeah. like, okay, you did a lot. Back the fuck up. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we I'm good. Using that mushroom compost. Like I'm excited. So since you use that mushroom compost, just real quick, yeah. uh, do you see that you get mass different like uh, species of like uh, fungi like popping up? Well, I haven't really inoculated it with a specific fungi, but mm. like I think that I could and it would probably be successful. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't cultivated in a while, mm -hmm. so it's something I want to get back onto. And uh, yeah, I actually work, you know, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's Brandon my dude. and I are always nerding out about. Yeah, uh, shout out Brandon. Yeah, shout that's out my to boy. Yeah, I was just with him the other day, and we were just nerding out about soil stuff yeah. and like substrate stuff. We're we're doing some cool science. I took that so I met him taking the soil smith course with him. Okay, that's how we met. Oh wow, that's incredible. Oh my god, I, I'm gonna have to tell him that. Like, and as soon as we fucking linked, like we saw each other in class, and you know, like it's just a real thing. Whenever you see like another black person in a in a in a more like non in a more like pro like more non blacker, more white environment, you always look over and you like, what's up? We gave <laughs> each other the head nod, sat next to each other, you fucking kindred spirits. I was like the first day, I'm like, you're my brother now. I hope you know. He was like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, shout out to him. Yeah. What, what an amazing amazing person. To yeah. Work with and um, steward these microbes with. No. Nah, he is the one. Mm -hmm. I love him. He's incredible. Um, yeah, I love those connections that we have. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to ask you is, can you just tell the people, like, if we have any listeners from Ohio mm -hmm. or, like, people that end up passing through, like, if they want to tap in with Tribe, what kind of offerings does Tribe have um, just in terms of, like, you know, workshops or different educational events or like mm -hmm. markets or et cetera. Like, are there any offerings that you want to tell people about? So we do have the the uh, monthly um, drive where you can always, uh, you can go to tribefoundation.org and you can always, always donate. Uh, we always need hygiene products. Um, it's the final Sunday of every month um, at Piot Park, which is across the street from the downtown Cincinnati library. Um, always hot food is needed always um clothes are always needed um as it's the middle of the summer we want to start looking into you know getting uh getting uh the homeless people prepared so sleeping bags uh warm coats scarves gloves stuff of that nature um that's always always accepted at tribefoundation.org but this is where i get to be cool and transparent and this is where i uh struggle on leadership and I have to hold myself more account accountable and I'm actually having um, a couple of uh, friends that I tapped in with and the first event that we're going to have down at the garden uh, because we don't it's not very structured or organized uh, just because that's kind of how I have the flow of the garden but uh, I do need to be better about structure and organization it's just can't fly like that all the time um, so the first thing that I am very uh, passionate about overall is just nutrition. Like I struggle with nutrition. Uh, I just started eating uh, meat uh, like tr uh, consistently for the first time in my life because uh, I grew up vegan. Yeah. And so being into natural farming has shown me uh, kind of a lot of the racism that is in veganism and how it really is like anti, you know, just being really one with your environment and what's available to you of veganism you know? that are definitely not like yeah it's like it's, i always make the distinction I'm like so if you grew up on an island or in a tropical environment it would make sense for you to be vegan it right. makes sense for you to just have fruits and veggies because you're in a zone to where you probably only got like max a month of cold mm -hmm. so you gonna have constant growth of vegetation if i'm in ohio I'm not growing shit from November to early March. No, early April. What am I going to eat? I probably should be eating some deer, 
some possum, some raccoons, things that are around me. Yeah. And so that's the actual reality of like being one with your environment. It's, yeah, so it's, being connected it's, to your environment, eating locally or hyper locally, mm -hmm. um, which could look like a lot of different things. Like you can uh, actually shout out to my friend Ash that does amazing herbalism work. She was talking about how when she goes into different places, like we'll sample like a local juniper berry because of the of the specific yeast that are going to be on that local berry and how that's supplementing your gut microbiome. And so that's what I mean by hyper locally versus just like locally sourced, like, you know, regionally sourcing your meat or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think like part of the food sovereignty conversation, there's a huge part of that of like not only having culturally appropriate food, based on like your heritage and your lineage, but also, um, yeah, regionally focused food and yes. food. <laughs> yes, yeah. it, it's like, that's, it's literally it. So um, the first week of August, um, still, the date is still tentative, but I will be having three different nutritionists uh, coming down uh, for five hours and we'll be having a free uh, nutrition course. And the reason why I have three is because they all uh, have kind of the same core base, but they all have completely different styles of going about it. And one thing I understand with myself is that I am not a teacher for everyone, uh, just because I still deal with uh, a lot of trauma of like being taught things at a very early age and then seeing society finally catch up without acknowledging all of the trauma that they put on somebody like me just for it to be cool now. And so I'm still okay, that was a that was a deep comment. I'm still working through that because I do have a vengeful spirit of like y'all motherfuckers own this now and you acting like you know all about this. But when I was in seventh grade, you were saying I was eating rabbit food. Right. And so that is I understand and that shout out to Siri because she checked me on this. I understand that that is truly like in the position of leadership I am, that is very off putting to a lot of people because I am talking shit to a lot of people who do seek my guidance and help. Yeah. And so I do have to have a middle ground of like, hey, maybe you're not ready to deal with that trauma quite yet, um, but you're in different positions, so you gotta make something crack and shake. And so the middle ground that I found was, okay, instead of talking this shit, let's provide nutrition courses for all of us. And since I understand that I'm not the teacher right now for everybody, I'm more of a teacher for people who already get it. Uh, people who don't get it yet, I accidentally talk down to, and I'm working on that. Uh, but that's 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's still a process. Um, but I know people who don't do that, so I'm gonna send you to those motherfuckers because they already ready for the task. And so that's why I want to have three. I have three different people. So. You don't get it from this motherfucker. You don't get it from this motherfucker. Ain't no way you just can't get it from this motherfucker. It's three people. Three. Yeah, this is. It's a, I believe in the three and the trio. I believe in the trio. Exactly. So you gonna get it from one of these people. So this is me holding accountability to myself and the community of doing better and stop talking down on people. I'm actually trying to help and actually providing quality resources. Uh, and stop being so loosey goosey of just whenever anybody comes down and throws and volunteers. That's when I teach them crazy, crazy things, but it's not organized. That's always you know? how like my volunteer experiences went, where it's like I I was gonna go volunteer on a farm and I just like I really wanted to just observe a new environment mm -hmm. and like see what people were up to and like see observe practices, you know, and, like mm -hmm. see what they just do on a day to day basis, mm -hmm. which may be related to a specific project or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like you have a few offering structures you have like volunteer yeah. days available you have events and speaking of volunteering uh so it is uh going through the uh like application process is going to get passed but this is something that um i actually i'm going to tap you in with as well do. uh so it can potentially get to new york uh there's this woman she's a part of it uh her name is missy spears shout out missy um she's a part of this uh, organization called concerted so what concerted does is they link up with mass nonprofits. You register a certain amount of hours for something and you get entertainment tickets. Uh, so for instance, uh, in, um, in Louisville, um, there is a WWE SmackDown event. If you volunteer for four hours, you get two tickets. Whoa. 
Uh, if you go and look up how much the tickets are, the tickets are $65 for the nosebleeds. Yeah. You're getting actual like good, decent, like on the floor seats, Beautiful. which are $120 for the cheapest ones. So I, I want to like have people think, what job can you have to where you would make $440 in four hours and then be willing to use that $440 to then go buy SmackDown tickets? Right. There is uh, concerts at like Riverbend Music Center, which is like a big, uh, like one of the biggest venues in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, it's not like stupid concerts. It's like actual like super headliners. You give two hours, you get one ticket. So uh, we will actually be offering concerted options to where uh, you give us a couple of hours and then you can log those onto your on, onto concerted and you can actually have your time spent. We will reward you with entertainment because the whole point of it is, unfortunately, we have to lure people into helping care for one another. And what better way than art and entertainment? So you give me some sweat down at the garden, we give you fucking tickets to amazing goddamn shows. And so this is a thing that is in Louisville. I believe it's in Indianapolis and Cincinnati right now, but it's a thing that's trying to really, really grow. Um, so like, if you are like interested, I'd love to tap you in with them because it is a, it's a true, true, like cool thing. They have uh, over 97% retention of volunteers. Beautiful. Okay. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you for tapping me in. I never yeah. heard about that. Yeah, no, it's they like, they, they're generated out of, uh, I think Cincinnati is where they started, but like they're brand new. So like, this is something that like is super cool that I think it really, really spread like wildfire. Right, and like, yeah, you get your community and you get your culture mm -hmm. in one place. And you like, already know. Yeah. yeah, not in one place, but really under the same umbrella. And um, I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, one of the, when I started this project, it's like one of the messages that was coming to me is like, not all farming looks how people think it looks. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, so all these different modes of stewardship are really, really cool. Yeah, I love that shit. <laughs> yeah. So, wow, you're doing so much. It's so great to hear about it. Yeah, thank and, you, um, thank you. Where can people uh, stay connected for when these events go live? So, um, uh, Tribe Foundation is the Instagram. Um, and then my personal one, uh, my personal Instagram, it's a, uh, it's public, it's not private, is Yazi13, Y-A-Z-I-1-3. And that's where I'll have uh, most of the updates. Um, and now that you mention it, I'm going to go and ask for some help and have somebody make me a tribe garden Instagram and pages. So uh, we can have updates on there. And if you're on Facebook, uh, these updates will be on the Tribe Foundation Facebook as well. And it's tribe with three I's, T-R-I-I-I-B-E, tribe. with this project you know find them on instagram do you have an email address i do z-e-q-u-e-w at gmail.com definitely uh holler at me and uh just make sure in the title if you listen to this you send it uh the the subject uh like it's related to this because i will gleam over it because i will think you're spam and i will not read it <laughs> so make sure you use community agriculture product project <laughs> yes thank you for that and with that, yeah, this this episode has come to an end. It's been incredible to hear about what's popping in Cincinnati. Yeah, and, Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> I'm stoked that we actually got a chance to connect in person. Hell yeah, me um, too, dude. It's really legendary. So yeah, this is the closing of episode six of the Community Agriculture Project podcast. And thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Please stay tuned for more episodes as we continue on this season and start to hear from more voices that are shaping this food web that we exist in. Um, okay, so talk soon, y'all. Peace. Yeah.